So what were the other errors of the opposition which fl flowed from this erroneous analysis of the Chinese Revolution given by the opposition? <coughs> Error number one. In the period of the all-national united front, this is known as the Canton period. And Canton, incidentally, in modern days is called Guangzhou, probably always was called Guangzhou, uh, and now everybody, including the foreigners, call it Guangzhou. It is where the uh, KMT's head headquarters were. They were the headquarters of revolution. And there was a period uh, when there was an all-united front of various classes, which means <coughs> the, the bourgeoisie, the peasantry, the petty bourgeoisie, um, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the urban poor. They were all in it. And this, this period was between 1925 and 12th of April. And for some time, the Trotsky and the rest of the opposition demanded that the communists should withdraw from the KMT. <coughs> Trotsky demanded that the CPC withdraw support from KMT. Why? Because the bourgeoisie is always counter-revolutionary. Um, Trotsky, of course, here is guilty of transplanting the concepts that he had learned, if he had learned anything, <coughs> from Russia of his day. The bourgeoisie in Russia was counter-revolutionary. As Lenin said, it was counter-revolutionary and could not but play a counter-revolutionary role. The idea of expecting the Russian bourgeoisie to play a progressive role was wrong. As the Mensheviks expected it to play a progressive role, the Bolsheviks in the opposite direction, did not play uh, uh, expected to. But the difference is this. The Russian bourgeoisie was bourgeoisie from an imperialist country. And the bourgeoisie of an imperialist country, of necessity, cannot but be counter-revolutionary. But the bourgeoisie in China was from an oppressed country. Under a s certain specific conditions for a certain limited period of time, the bourgeoisie of an oppressed country, including that of China, <coughs> is capable of playing a progressive role. And the fact that it did play a progressive role in China for a certain period of time is cannot be doubted by anyone who looks at the facts. Alliance with such a bourgeoisie is perfectly le legitimate as long as the proletariat is not hindered in its work of organizing independently among the broad masses of people under its own program. The fact is that being part of the KMT facilitated the work of the CPC. I'll give you the results later on of how, how the Communist Party gained. This does not mean that the, it didn't suffer losses either when, when, when Chiang Kai-shek staged his coup d'etat. On April the 12th, 1927, the right wing of the KMT, led by Chiang Kai-shek, launched its coup and started massacring the communists. The national bourgeoisie uh, um, then set up its counter-revolutionary center in the city of Nanking, deserted the camp of revolution and sided with counter-revolution and imperialism. Why? For two reasons. One, the fear of the agrarian revolution, because it's a, it was a government do dominated by feudal elements and by um, um, militarists who had deep uh, uh, and inextricable connections with, with feudal ruling classes. And secondly, pressure put on Chiang Kai-shek by imperialism in Shanghai and, and, and such, such like places. Following the desertion of the national bourgeoisie, the left wing of the KMT established its center in Wuhan. Wuhan is, 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 is part of, uh, is the name given to a triple city, I, Hankou and two others, Wuchang and, and, and Yanying or something. It's called Wuhan, but it's the, it's the triple, tri, tri, triple city. And Wuhan then, and Wuhan KMT became the center of the agrarian revolution, which at the time, uh, and subsequently of course, was led by the CPC. I shall constantly say CPC instead of the Communist Party of China saves a little bit of time. How did the uh, Trotskyist opposition characterize Wuhan? Trotsky described the Wuhan KMT and Wuhan government as a fiction, and yet did not advocate withdrawal from this fiction um, of, of the CPC which was at the time allied with the left wing of the KMT in, in Wuhan. And this is how Stalin describes this um, logical incongruity of Trotsky. And it's a quotation from Stalin. Let us assume that Wuhan is a fiction. 
But if Wuhan is a fiction, why does Trotsky not insist on a determined struggle against Wuhan? Since when have communists been supporting <coughs> fictions, participating in fictions, standing at the head of fictions, and so on? Is it not a fact that the communists are duty-bound to fight against fictions? Is it not a fact that if communists refrain for, from fighting against fictions, it would mean deceiving the proletariat and the peasantry? Why then Trotsky does not propose the communists should with, would fight against this fiction if only by immediate withdrawal from Wuhan KMT and the Wuhan government? Why does Trotsky propose that they should remain within this fiction and not withdraw from it? Where is the logic in it? Is not this logical incongruity to be explained by the fact that Trotsky took up a swaggering attitude towards Wuhan and called it a fiction, and then got cold feet and shrank from drawing the appropriate conclusion from his thesis? So such was Trotsky's position, the, Trotsky's position on the question of Wuhan. His fellow oppositionist, Zinoviev, who at one time, of course, had a better understanding of, 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 of Leninism and had played um, uh, an important role in the Bolshevik party, but by this time he deserted to the opposition. He characterized Wuhan government as a Kemalist government after Ataturk Kemal of, of Turkey. But what is a Kemalist revolution? It's a revolution of the upper stratum of the merchant bourgeoisie against imperialism, which from the, its very first beginnings is directed against workers and peasants, a revolution that gets stuck at its very first stage, with the question of passing into socialist revolution being entirely out of question. Such a government does not fight against feudalism, therefore it is no place for the com there is no place for the communists in such a government. If Wuhan was indeed such a government, the overthrow of such a government was absolutely necessary. But that is what, as Stalin said, that is what ordinary people with ordinary human logic might think. Mm -hmm. Far from advocating its overthrow, Zinoviev demanded that most energetic support be given to the Wuhan government. So it's a Kamalist government, but we must give it most energetic support. Here is what Zinoviev said um, in April 1927. It is necessary to render the most energetic and all-round assistance to Hankow. Hankow is the name for Wuhan, if you like. And to organize resistance from there against the Kavianaks. Now, if you don't know what Kavianaks are, I'll explain another time. Uh, you, you have to uh, go, go, go back to the era of uh, French Revolution of the 19th century. In the immediate future, efforts should be concentrated precisely on facilitating organization, uh, organization and consolidation in Hankow. And what does Stalin say on, on that? Understand that if you can. He goes on to say that Stalin, what does all this show? It shows that the opposition has got entangled in contradictions. It's lost the capacity to think logically. It has lost all sense of perspective, confusion of mind, and loss of all sense of perspective on the Wuhan question, such as the position of Trotsky and the opposition, if confusion can ever be described as a position at all. So that was the first error of Trotskyist opposition, confusing the Chinese revolution with the Russian revolution and confusing the bourgeoisie of an oppressed country with the bourgeoisie of an imperialist country, of the Chinese bourgeoisie with the Russian bourgeoisie.